Hello, my name's Michael Keneally, and this is a video about Danista Nakshatra, the 23rd Nakshatra, the 23rd lunar sign of Vedic astrology. And the Nakshatras are such powerful, huge and accurate interpretation. And I'm filming near our healing centre in the far west of Ireland, and the cattle have just started being rather noisy, so I hope that doesn't drown me out. Anyway, so the nakshatras are immensely powerful in the way they depict our state of consciousness if we have a planet there, particularly a major planet, and it's a warts and all depiction. It unflinchingly describes the worst that's possible for us in terms of pla our planet in a nakshatra, but pointing towards the best, how we can develop perception, grow spiritually, and achieve the highest potential of each nakshatra. And I do a nakshatra course, um, and you know, really do enrol for that if you want to study the nakshatras. It's a magnificent course where you just you study each of the nakshatras in turn, part one, and in part two you go on to analytic techniques using the nakshatras. So what can we say about Danishta? Well, as I said, it's the 23rd nakshatra of the 27 nakshatras. And I'm going to give you a few buzzwords, and there's a blog which will give you rather more, but I'm actually holding in my page the, sorry, in my hand, the seven page course document that I give students, telling them all about Danista nakshatra. But I'm not going to read out the whole seven pages to you now. So, okay. Danishta Nakshatra spans the Vedic signs of Capricorn and Aquarius and it's ruled by Mars so that instantly tells you its energy is aggressive and you know can be rather warlike and like all of the Nakshatras it has a power animal and Danishta's power animal is the lioness well would you mess with a lioness they're temperamental they're regal they're demanding they're aggressive um, and so, you know, the notes go on to list body parts and, um, you know, uh, the doshas, it's pitta, you know, the sex, it's female, and the symbol is usually the drum or the flute, and there's a lot that's implied by that symbol. So, let's read on a bit. So because there's a combination of the ruling planet Mars and yet it's in the signs Capricorn and Aquarius, there's a Saturn-Mars combination which on the one hand is very, well, aggressive even and, you know, warlike and does the warrior task, but, the, but Saturn con contributes to that um, gathering the resources that the person would need to achieve their warrior task. And so in fact, Anishtu, it actually means wealth. It is usually and often a person who amasses wealth. Um, but it's a very problematic nakshatra for life fulfillment and for relationship. And the saying is, it's quite a lonely nakshatra to have from a very early age, and that's said to be, you know, that the Vedic wisdom is, because these people are often fulfilling other people's expectations rather than their own. You know, the bossy mother is laying the trip on the person, you know, there's a religious expectation, there's a career expectation, there's a money-earning expectation, whatever it is. So you'll notice I said the, the symbol is the drum or the flute, and both of those instruments are empty. And so, in fact, beautiful music can be played, but there's emptiness. So a Danishta person knows that, in some huge level, their life is empty, their identity is empty. And the trouble is they often pursue fruitless dreams and illusions. They can chase money and promotion that will not bring them happiness. They can even sort of take up drinking. And that's an important thing. 
Whereas what they need to do is to see the emptiness of what they are they're filling the drum or the flute and to move on to spiritual perception and spiritual expression of their lives and spiritual treatment of other people. So let's go through some of the key themes on page two of the course documents. So, the sign is associated with material wealth and property. They want and desire fame and recognition, often because of childhood pressures. They are regal and heroic and so could be called good leaders, or well, leaders anyway, and often they have a showy streak. They're good conversationalists. So in fact they can fool people who they're actually being very cruel to with a conversational gloss. And they're very social and they love to be part of a group and they have all these friends and so of course they can't possibly be as you know, aggressive or all the rest that you're going to hear about because all these people like me. So as I said, the nakshatras show warts and all, but it's very important to hear the warts if we are to grow. They have good mental acumen and discrimination. They can be light-hearted and sensitive, but this can change into fickleness and self-indulgence. And at their worst, they're greedy, self-absorbed and narcissistic. And from that dreadful position, they're rash and arrogant. The sign Danista definitely has a very bad reputation for marriage and relationship. Marriage can be delayed and denied, prevented due to the effect of others in the life. We have that again. And so the problem is they want money, they want leadership, and that can make them false, insincere and empty because they're trying to live up to conditioning from others such as parents or people at the place of work. So they appear optimistic but there's a streak of deceptiveness and they are definitely, can be bad tempered and ready to hurt people and definitely if you know a person with a major planet in at Danishta, you'll see the captivating smile, the roving eyes. But know that it is worse, this can support deceptiveness and cruelty. So they have a very firm will, and this can make them de decisive and selfish, but also violent. And there's a flamboyancy which makes them extravagant, ambitious, greedy, but they can be actually apt the end of the story, very cold in their dealing with others. Stingy, greedy and covetous, inconsiderate, heartless and revengeful, aloof and arrogant. Okay, I've said quite a lot and it sounds quite negative. This is my personal experience, but of course it's only half the story. So what's the other half if the Danister actually decides to be honest develop perception and then heal and empower themselves and adopt a spiritual way of life? Well, there's often quite a scientific or legal cast to the mind. And that can be very useful in, for example, developing philosophical and spiritual understanding and certain sorts of healing approaches. And because of the Saturn influence, they are disciplined and structured. And because of the Mars energy, the signs ruled by Mars, they will develop the system they're focusing on, develop the philosophical spiritual system, develop the healing system. So I'm trying to show that in fact in this way they're turning their qualities to good ends. Um, so favourably, this nakshatra can make a good living, can be charitable and brave, can do well in foreign countries, has good organisational abilities, can be ambitious and motivated, and they can often be quite skilled in old or mysterious things and can be skilled in astrology. And 
they have a sense of the value of what they produce when they're at their best. So, as I said, there are seven pages of notes that you get if you enroll on my Nakshatras course, seven pages about Danishta Nakshatra, and you study all 27 in part one of the course. Or, of course, have a reading. If you feel that what I've been talking about, Danishta, could be, you know, of help, we could explore it together. And the ultimate bonus would be filling the emptiness. So, get in touch if you want to enrol on the course, get in touch with me if you want a reading. All my readings combine Western astrology with Vedic astrology and they always draw on the limitlessly vast wisdom of the nakshatras. So I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you.